Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is an English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Maulana Qamaru Zama Sahib Dhamad Barakatuhum, which took place on Sunday morning after the Ishraq Salat, maybe at about 9:30 a.m. Sunday, the 20th of Rajab, 1444, corresponding with the English date 12th of February 2023. Hazrat Wala is saying that Allah Ta'ala addresses Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying So ignore him who turns away from our advice فَأَعْرِضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّا عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا That is do not hanker after him and Do not be grieved by his deeds. Your duty is to convey the message and those who reject will have to suffer the consequences of their rejection. Allah Ta'ala further describes the person who rejects the advice of Quran as the one who desires only the life of this world. Every aspect of such a person's life revolves around this world. He earns to love and loves to to earn so you know allah taala says hudal lil muttaqin now is the hidayat only for the ones who fear no rather understand it this way that naturally that fear that a person some amount of fear that he has in his heart will be the means of him getting a uh, uh, hidayat i mean look at the example of hazrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala an he beat up his sister and brother in law but in his heart there was that amount of space rather that loneliness loneliness ajizi in kisari that when it was presented to him then he accepted Now when he realized and he said that what are you reading give it to me let me see at that time what did the sister say she said and she mentioned that you are impure you are impure therefore you may not uh touch this heavenly uh scripture you may not touch this heavenly scripture now look this was the bravery and the jurat and the strength that allah taala had uh, given her so mubarak and blessed be such a sister blessed be such a mother blessed be such a wife now this quran is and uh, has come for admonition for nasihat for guidance Now you can imagine how he must have said that give it to me let me read no you are unable more you will not touch the scripture because you are impure however today what can we do about our women folk they have or rather are just only pursuing that of fashion aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha was told by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that O oh, Aisha do not uh, remove or take out that set of clothes until or unless it does not become uh, patched You know just here at home I can tell you something that a remark was made that a woman folk are becoming uh, so low or women folk are Uh, not doing what they supposed to do so then i remarked and i said that uh, but the men folk have to have that amount of understanding they need to see the situation they need to understand what can i say about uh, abdullah's mother it is her barakat that today the daughters are all so neck what and so saintly and so much so i can tell you that siddiqa uh, i've made her majaze sohbat
So, he was thirsty for the blood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, when he comes because of the barakat and of the quran e majid and the countenance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the effects that have, that have, has upon him, he diet and iman then enters his heart. Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Sahib used to go out to make iyadat and to go and visit people or sometimes for his own hospital appointment. I mean, you're just in the hospital here in Ilahabad. Now, how people used to come out uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to come, come to find out about this, I don't know. And people then used to gather. Nevertheless, the doctor would then come out also and people would also come out. Immediately, what did Hazrat Monana used to say? He used to say, uh, Monana, dek ye. Hamne to deen naqis ikhtiyar kiya. Jab uska ye asar hai, to agar, agar hamne pura deen ikhtiyar kar liya, to kya ho jayet? Listen, Maulana, we have just uh, adopted some weak or some uh, incomplete amount or portion of the deen. That's what we have adopted. And these are the effects of it, so overwhelming, so great. If we just adopted the entire and the complete deen, what would have happened then? Another example I can give you of Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Saab, that whenever the electricity used to go, you know, especially after the Maghrib Salat, when we were used to be sitting in uh, Zikr Majlis, and at that time, absolute silence, there was no remark from him whatsoever, whereas I stayed with many others, ulama, saintly, seniors, and they would all say something and something. But Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Ahmad Saab, not a word. Not a word. And then after that, when the electricity used to be restored, the lights used to come back, then he would say that Noor aisa hi aajata hai. That the Noor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like that, it enters the heart of an individual. Walil imani darajat. Understand it? Iman has different stages. The first stage of Iman is Ijra u Shahadataini al Lisan to bring and to utter the Shahadat with the tongue. The second one is you're doing what you have to do, but together with all of that, you are waiting for the Noor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come into your heart. And the third one is actually when the Noor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters the heart. Now, a person who is waiting for the Salat, is like he's actually in Salat. So similarly, we are doing what we have to do and we are waiting for the Noor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come into our hearts. Speaking about Noor and the Noor penetrating and entering the heart, you know there is a dua that is read at the time of Fajr Salat, when a person goes for his Fajr Salat, Allahumma j'al fi qalbi noora wa fi sam'i noora wa fi basari noora. On one occasion, we were in the Haramain or going to Makkah Mukarra, uh, to the Haramain in, in Makkah Mukarrama for the Salat. It was the time of Dhuhr Salat. And Hazrat Maulana Abraul Haq asked me that Maulana, can we read this dua at this point or at this time also? Now, this was the khususiyat of Hazrat Maulana that he would always ask. This was his tawazu. People say that he was strict and he was. Uh, hard or this or that but I understood him to be like this I can even tell you about one occasion Manana Izhar was also there and the Khadim was not there at that time we were not so acquainted or so not in, uh, informal with Hazar Manana and the Khadim was not there and we, I say to Manana Izhar what will Manana do now and at that time, Maulana stands up himself and he goes and he gets that bench and his miswak, he takes the lota and he fills the lota uh, as well. Maulana was a very, very uh, delicate person, a very, very uh, sensitive. Nazuk, absolute in his mizaj, delicate nature. On one occasion he says, but I'm getting the smell of eggs. And then we realize that that container, the utensil that was there, there was... Uh, the white of the egg was kept in there or something like that 
due to which Hazrat had already uh, perceived uh, that what's happening, there is a smell of eggs here, etc. Once Hazrat asked, now uh, what is it? Uh, must we, Morana, must we wa wash our hands before we eat biscuits? So I said to him that if Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam washed his hands before he ate kajur, then on this occasion most definitely then we would wash our hands before eating biscuits. But that was not established from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, uh, no need. Now this is the shan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the shan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was asked, Halil Arifu Yazni, that Wala Arif ever make a, a zina? And he said that if it is in his muqaddar, then most definitely, if it is written out for him. Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib, he used to take our imtihan every now and then. And on one occasion, he asked, and there were all senior ulama that were sitting there. And he said, that what do I want from you people? Write it and give it to me. And then I write there, Hazrat Wala is saying, that, that we, hum admi hai, we are from Adam. And the sifat of Adam was that of Ajizi, Tawazu and Inkisari. I can't even tell you how pleased Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib became uh, with this. Now, this tafsir that we have here فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى So do not ascribe purity to yourself. He knows best who is the most uh, pious. Mufti um, Ashiki uh, So Alhamdulillah I got mulaqat with him. I had the chance to meet him in uh, Madina Munawwara. And he's the Khalifa also of Hazrat Shaykh Al-Hadith. So now here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares, so do not ascribe purity to yourselves. He knows best who is most pious. Now the prohibition against proclaiming one's piety. Allah knows best who are the people who abstain from kufr and shirk. Even before people were born, Allah was aware of their identities and the deeds they were destined to carry out. He knew exactly whether they would be carrying out good deeds and what deficiencies may exist in these deeds. Allah Ta'ala will therefore either reward or punish people according to the deeds they carry out. It is foolish of a person to go about telling people about, many, or about the many fasts. Rosas that he observes, about the many rakats of salat that he performs, about the many times he had performed hajj, etc. Even though he may have carried out all these acts of ibadat, no person is capable of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he deserves to be worshipped. Therefore, they will always be some deficiency in a person's ibadat, even though he fails to realize it. Since one's acts of ibadat are fraught with faults, one is not justified in boasting about these. The above verse prohibits praising oneself, lauding one's actions, telling others of one's good deeds so that they revere and patronize one, boasting about one's deeds. Now all of this here is prohibited in the above verse. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does like people to keep names which proclaim their piety. Hazrat Zainab bint Abu Salma narrates that her name used to be Barra, meaning virtuous, pious. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam changed her name to Zainab saying, do not proclaim your own piety. That is, do not call yourself pious. 
because Allah knows who of you are pious. Now the, the meaning of her name was Barra which meant pious. This hadith means that when a person keeps such a name and is asked, who are you? Their reply will be, I am pious, I am Barra. This appears to be self-praise, which is prohibited, just as Rasulullah changed the name of Barra to Zainab. He also changed the name of another girl, Asiya, Sana, to Jamila, to Beautiful. This teaches us that just as one should not adopt a name or title that exudes self-praise, the name should also not portray sin and vice. Although a mu'min should be pious, he should not go about proclaiming his piety to others. At the same time, he is susceptible to, to, to sins and should make tawbah to secure forgiveness uh, for these uh, sins. He must therefore not adopt a name or title that indicates sinfulness. There are many people who, because of humility, call themselves Abdul Asi, the sinful slave, or Asi Pur Maasi, the sinner who is full of sin. Now, adopting such titles contradicts the explicit instructions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now this is tariq. Allah Ta'ala, these talimat are for all. You know, I'll tell you about Ibrahim bin Adham. Rahimahullah. Great luminary, Saint Wali of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He abandons everything, his riches, rather his castle, and his rule. And he sets out to live in the jungle. His army even comes about and says to him, that tell us is there anybody that is threatening you do you fear anyone we will suffice for all of that and ibrahim bin adham says to them that okay listen i'm just you asking me if i'm fearing and scared of anything listen it's about one ayat of the quran fariqun fil jannati wa fariqun fil sa'ir one group will be allotted to jannah and the other to jahannam now uh, that's what's troubling me and what do I do maybe if you can write and give me a guarantee of that then no problem I'll return and I'll continue with my life then Allahu Akbar and then from that same progeny we have Hazrat Haji Imdadullah in fact Hazrat Tanvi is also from that same uh, Silsila there and I'll tell you about another waqia of Hazrat Haji Imdadullah that Sometime, uh, what had happened is that some amount of money and estate was being rounded up and this was all belonged to Ibrahim bin Adham. And then the people said, but his family person, his own blood and progeny is that of Hazrat Hajim Dadullah and he is in poverty, etc. Why don't we make him the mutawalli of this estate? The one to be in charge, rather he is uh, deserving of it completely and totally. And then he said, when they said this to him, he asked, But this very forebear and forefather of mine who abandoned this same thing, he kicked it. Now do you want me to adopt that and take this uh, estate of his? And after that, do, do you think that I can be from his progeny? It's impossible. Allahu Akbar. Another incident is that of the founder of Hazrat of Madrasa Salatiya. Madrasa Salatiya. Hazrat Maulana Rahmatullah Kiranvi. And he sees the parashani and the trouble of Hazrat Haji Imdadullah regarding his poverty, etc. And he says that, listen, why don't I make mention of why don't I make mention of you in front of the Sultan and the King? And he says, listen, please don't do that. Because if you're going to make mention, he may become impressed and he'll call me to his castle or to the palace. And I don't want to abandon Baytullah in exchange of Baytus Sultan. Allahu Akbar. Khune dil ko. 
लगते जिगर गाने को यही गजा मिलती है जाना तेरी दीवाने को यू हैव टू अंडर गो समाइप ऑफ डिफिकल्टी इनकनवीनियंस पेन इन दिस पाथ एंड देन अ पर्सन विल देन अचीव Hazrat Junaid rahimahullah used to say that the path of ours is completely uh, substantiated mushayyad bil Quran wa sunnah muayyad You know sometimes a person want to wants to say in solitude and in solitude also he is committing sin in fact someone said to hazrat tanwi that they they want to uh, sit in solitude so he said to them that khalwat me shohrat aur shohrat me afat that listen if you want to sit in solitude and even people come to know about this there will be great fame that will come your way and when this great fame comes your way then that will be approve to be a calamity for you on one occasion hazrat tanwi was passing by uh, rai bareli and at that time one of the buzruks there from that town uh, has a dream that hazrat tanwi is passing and uh, he is seeing that noor of hazrat tanwi and he is told that you should uh, call him nevertheless he comes and he relates this dream to hazrat tanwi who is passing by the town and he calls him and he invites him and hazrat tanwi then denies it saying listen i'll come on another I, 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 he denies the invitation so he says i'll come on another occasion now at this particular time you see in a dream that is talk of town now people are waiting and you have come to call me when i go there there will be shohrat and in shohrat there is af uh, afat there will be fame and with fame comes this uh, calamity uh, uh, it comes with its own package allahu akbar Now Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the hidayat rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam